probably open during this, you know, oh, good weather. But yeah. yeah. Hmm. Somewhere I found it. Yeah, but paper now. I know paper. Well, where I work, we're in progress. Say so. Um, yeah. I think anything else other than your gender, so I think you need to you need the agenda. Need the agenda. Need the agenda. I'm not sure how well I haven't updated anything. Becky, you're muted. But I don't have my pen. I don't think I have an extra one. So I, have a, a I have an extra one right here. You're awesome. All right. Um, it is 5.30. Shall we call ourselves to order for the select board meeting? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Order. Um, order in the court. Order in the court. Uh, so just as a reminder, we are coming to everybody in a hybrid environment. So if you would like to speak, you'll need to raise your hand on the variant hand feature. And um, there's no one on by call, so we should be okay there. If someone comes on by call, we'll have to instruct them how to raise their hand. All right, so first up, then we'll go uh, through the agenda. We have public comment at 535 followed by a review of minutes of November 8th, 21st, and December 5th. Uh, then we have the Clark Class 3 Auto Dealer License. At 5.55, the select board will discuss a possible date for town meeting. Uh, that's followed by a grant award from DEP for Recycling Dividend Program Funds under the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program at 605 will review the highway superintendent and the assistant librarian job descriptions. 615 review special town meeting warrant for approval and posting. Uh, 625 initial select board review of flagpole policy. And 630 town administrator updates. Was there anything that popped in after this was posted? Okay. No, I think we're good. Everyone good with that? Okay, um, I will open it up for public comment. And I see two hands. Um, just as a reminder, we don't generally respond to questions asked to us in public comment. Uh, Miriam. 
Hi, thanks. Um, I'm not going to stay for the whole meeting, and I don't know if you're going to be discussing this, so I just wanted to bring up that um, last night, as you know, we sent a draft of the bylaw that the Conservation Commission had approved um, with some recommendations to the select board um, for how to structure the warrant article and um, hoping that the uh, select board will co-sponsor it with us. And then this morning, as you're aware, um, we had some new input from Attorney McGregor with some questions. Um, so um, I've been busy today. I've had a number of conversations with Donna McNichol, and she's been extremely helpful going through those comments. Um, and as a result, um, Donna and I um, came up with some very minor edits to the draft bylaw, which Donna feels um, addresses all possible concerns. They're not substantive or major changes. They don't change jurisdiction. They don't change permitting decisions. They just are really clarifying language here and there are some very small edits. Um, Donna doesn't feel we need to have another public hearing for this, but she would like the Conservation Commission to review it and um, hopefully uh, vote again. Um, so I am struggling with this because Monday is a holiday and it's too late um, for me to get a meeting posted for Thursday. Um, and it's the holidays and people's availability is really limited. Um, but I am polling people, calling the commissioners, trying to come up with a date and time. So one of my questions that I'm hoping you will answer is, I know that you're going to be reviewing the warrant on the 26th at this point because of this delay. Uh, but what time on the 26th? If I if I have to try to convene a meeting on the 26th, is that possible? Well, I work during the day, so it that wouldn't be, be until after 5 30. It would be 5 30. You're not going to, yeah. Becky, because I know you need to, you have to prepare some things, Becky, during the day, right, for the warrant for the select board. Um, the only change I would need to make is to insert your revised bylaw into the warrant. Okay. So if you're meeting, you know, if I have half an hour ahead, I can get that inserted and prepared for the select board. Okay. So could we make it six o'clock just to, you know, you could potentially have a meeting at 5.30, Miriam? Um, I could if I can get two other commissioners. So yes, I could. And I'm definitely, you know, doing my best. Um, one of the commissioners is out of town and um, another one has limited availability and I don't haven't even heard from another one. So there may be two of them out of town. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. Um, um, so why don't we say six? Okay, uh, good. I haven't scheduled it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's after 530. Um, and, I, and I just would like to say, you know, we've been really working to turn this around quickly, but um, it was a little frustrating getting this information after we had closed the public hearing. I wish we had gotten it a little sooner so that we could have had a, a complete final draft last night. And, is, and as you know, I didn't have these till you had closed from McGregor. So uh, I, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry, but that's when he sent them. Okay. Um, I just had one other thought. Um, hopefully, in case you are unable to get a quorum, the only other thought I have is what that would potentially entail, Miriam, is taking the minor edits you're talking to um, and amend on the floor of town meeting. I have no idea how how complicated the amendments are. That if just so that you know that you can think about this other possibility if you're if you can't get a quorum for the twenty you know, by the 26th, um, the commission could say that after we open the article on town meeting that you have these number of edits to, you know, come forward and make those amendments to the article on town meeting floor. But again, and then, you have to have copies you for and then you have to have copies for everybody with those edits. Yeah, we'd have to have copies with the edits. All right, well, see what I can do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Carlos. Hello. Uh, so um, 
Hi. I would like to start by saying that I, I, I would hope that in the future you could allocate a little bit more more time for public comment. I, it doesn't seem that five minutes is really enough uh, to um, for the democratic process to really take place. And I would also hope that it was not just at the beginning of the meeting, but uh, at uh, other times so that there would be the possibility for the public to comment on the proceedings of the meeting. The other thing I would like to say is that, I mean, I'm hearing what Miriam said now, and uh, I was at the Conservation Committee meeting yesterday, and there was a, a, some something that came from Attorney McGregor at 4.30, and I, I, you know, he's supposedly the best in Massachusetts, and this just sounds so unprofessional. And I don't think it's just enough to say, well, that's when he sent it. That is not, that is not something that we should just accept because it models this whole process. It makes it really difficult. And so at this point, um, I think that the bylaw, the current by bylaw, has uh, incorp incorporated all of the uh, all of the comments that Attorney M McGregor suggested, minors, those that are dripping in, and I really hope that this will be sufficient for the select board to support this bylaw because this is the process that the select board wanted. This is the process uh, uh, that uh, uh, with the attorney that the select board selected and paid for. So I am hoping that you will make a statement today about whether you support the uh, proposed by law or not. I think uh, the public needs to really know where you clearly stand on, on this, because I don't think it's really helpful to continue to not have a clear stance, because a, a clear stance just weakens the by the by law. We need a clear process. We need a clear stance here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, is there any other, anyone else who has public comment? Okay. Um, going on to reviewing the minutes, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 8th? Thank you. Yes. So moved. Second. I'm, I lost myself. Here we go. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, are there any uh, edits or adjustments to the draft that is here in front of us? No. no. Okay. okay. All in favor of approving the minutes from November 8th? Carol, aye. Scott, aye. Nate O'Neill, aye. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from November 21st? So, so moved. Okay. Second. All right. Any edits or adjustments? Okay. No. Um, all in favor? Carol, aye. Strucker, aye. Make so Neil, aye. And the minutes for December 5th. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. And, Second. Okay. Any edits or adjustments? No, no. 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 Okay. All in favor? Carol, aye. Strucker, aye. Make these so Neil, aye. And I just want to thank um, Geneva for getting mm -hmm. those done. And we, we started a new process where she is forwarding the draft minutes to the select board. And so we can just give her edits ahead right. of time. So we're not trying to do the editing so much mm -hmm. here. I mean, we still can do it, but it, it worked really well this time. Yeah. Okay, so we had lots of lots of time to, to take a look with her. So thank you, Geneva. That was great. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, moving on to Clark class three auto 
Steeler Life Sense. This comes in front of us every year before the end of the year. Um, in the past, Linda had walked us through. Um, and does it usually um, see? She, yeah, Sarah is there. Sarah is here. Sarah is not here. here. Um, I know she was scheduled. Not in the waiting room, is she? No, no I don't think I, the I emailed with her today so she knew what time the meeting was and what time they were on for. So she'll probably jump on soon. Okay. Um, is there maybe an update that we could do or um, in the middle while we're waiting potentially um, for her or? Okay. Uh, do you want to go one. through the... Uh, we talk about town meeting or we can talk about town meeting why don't we do that yeah shall we talk about town meeting? okay so the april 20th an annual annual town meeting yeah and, Look at the calendar. and i just realized that when you asked about the agenda changing i should have brought up that we aligned with the concept miriam was discussing i don't know there's no reason to vote the special town meeting warrant tonight it's right. an agenda item I think at 6.15 that we should, will not be happening tonight. 6.15? I think it's yeah, we were going to do that. Um, so, yes. Yeah. All right. Just missed I apologize. I... <laughs> okay. um, so we would do that on Tuesday. We just go for the whole, for the whole warrant and, and hope that, that we have what, the existing bylaw and then the new no bylaw. we don't need the no existing um what is the resolution um between miriam and donna was that we're going to um the language is almost identical to what was there originally okay and the only um document will be the new bylaw okay it's going right. to say and replace with okay. that we will um repeal the first one and replace with and then okay. and then one warrant article in one warrant okay. article Good. But as it <laughs> as it was okay so we can go back to the annual town meeting annual town okay. meeting um uh, Becky you have the 27th written on our agenda with a question mark my my first question of that is are we doing it outside again I think we my the it's feedback I heard <laughs> right, yeah. is to to do it at the school uh, to return to doing it indoors um, in a bit cooler weather, but of course, the re I think what's really provoked this is the frigid temperatures we had at the last town meeting. Yeah, a number of people were um, turned away or stayed home once as a result of the cold. Um, and if we can avoid that and save the money for the I'm going to have Grace because she's part of the annual town meeting. Yes, Do you mind if I bring her into the conversation? I see your hand, Grace, too. I have a feeling you would like to respond. Or yeah. Um, so part of part of the reason that I am suggesting we go to April 27th and we plan to have annual town meeting in the school gym like we used to, even though I I personally really love having annual town meeting outside and I know a lot of other people really, really enjoy it. And I do think that there are certain benefits to having it outside. Like just like the one thing that pops into my head is the childcare aspect, which like in the school, that's always a big deal, but it's been super mellow when we're doing it outside. The kids go down to the little dip at the way back of the field and like play tag and hide and seek and stuff. And it's, just something that I know has historically always been a bit of a snafu at annual town meeting. And when we do it outside, it seems to be super mellow and easy. So like there are those kinds of benefits. Um, I think the cold issue we experienced last time around, which was an unusually cold day for late May, uh, that's a reason to go inside. But um, the main reason I think we should go to April 27th is our bylaw says that our annual town meeting is held on the last Saturday in April. And state law says that the select board can change the date of annual town meeting in the event of an emergency. And 
while COVID is probably still an emergency, we are three going on four years in and uh, that argument just gets a little more shaky. So that is that has been my reasoning for why I am encouraging us to decide to stick with our bylaw. And they have um, the COVID emergency technically has ended the determination by state and federal government. So technically it's over. Great. Um, Scott, were you? Yeah, concerned? I guess my only question is was there anything that benefited by the later date, just in terms of budgets, like the regional schools? They're, they're always ready by this time. The, the later date makes the budgeting stuff actually harder. At least, at least for me as a town clerk, because, um, you know, preparing for annual town meeting and the local election is a huge amount of work, and then closing it out is a huge amount of work, and then the closer that is to the end of the fiscal year, the harder it has been for me. Yeah, I know. I was I was speaking to um, departments and particularly the schools having their budgets done by then. I think um, because Amherst. They have they start voting early with their council. It has to be done at the regional level anyway. By that time, okay. and Leverage traditionally has you. They had they've always been around the same date as we have mm -hmm. the the traditional one, mm -hmm. the end of April okay. timeline. So the union also yeah is done. settled. So I don't think schools are at play. Okay. Um, the only the advantage it's been is when we have a major project or an article, we've been able to get the bids finalized ahead, but we're starting early on the school roof, exteriors, um, not the roof, the school exterior and inking. So we hope to have the bids in by February, uh, okay. uh, I mean, out in January back by March. So, yeah. so we would have those numbers. Yeah, so we okay. should be okay this year. So uh, it sounds like... I mean, yeah. I think it makes sense, and I think it makes sense to do it inside. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we do annual town, that we hold annual town meeting on April 27th, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. and at the school gym. Second. Okay. All those, there are any further questions? All those in favor? Carol, aye. Scott Brown. Excuse me, I just put on my calendar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if it's not there. Um, all right. So we're going to bounce back up to the Clark's Class 3 Auto Dealer License. Sarah, we see you have appeared and joined us. Thank you for joining us. Um, I had said that we do this every year for, for Clark's, I think just about every year. And usually Linda walks us through it. So um, is there something, um, there's an application, but you filled out, I see that you have, that we have that. Yep, yep, yeah. okay. Becky, um, well, I was gonna say, I know Geneva's been back and forth um, with you, Sarah, to get to set up. Um, some, I think the select board in the past has asked, you know, just general questions about how business is going and how things are doing. Um, and then we move ahead with the, the certificates that need to be signed. Sarah, do you have any updates for the select board this year? Oh, no, you're, you're muted. muted. Sorry, you're muted. Maybe I can help. Hang on, Sarah, let me send you a little bit. Uh, I think you just have to press that now. Do you see it? Hello. There you go. Hey. <laughs> All right, slightly embarrassed. Um, everything is, we're okay. We're surviving. Um, we didn't crush this year. Um, and we hope for no snow. So that's, that's all I got. <laughs> That's about okay. Um, is there? Do you have any questions, Rita or? 
No, I looked at. I mean, we've seen this yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I well, then same, same time, same place. You're right. Okay. So, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the class three um, auto dealer license for Clark Southern? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all in favor? Carol, aye. Dr. Aye. May peace O'Neill, aye. <laughs> Hopefully that was Pamela <laughs> Sarah. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have to sign that messy notarized right to get the notarization from Grace. Can you sign it? Yes, I um I believe Geneva left it upstairs in the box, but okay. she'll have it available if it's not there after the meeting. We'll have it tomorrow. Okay. okay. And and does that have to be notarized? I thought this was yeah, the certificate does Grace still here? Uh Grace is here, yeah. But Geneva, I just, Geneva I want to be notarized. I just wanted to say thank you to Geneva to make for making this such a painless process. Um, I don't have a problem coming in person. I was actually like, oh, I, I can't go up to town. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it, I do appreciate um, how seamless she made it. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Geneva. Um, do you know if it needs to be notarized, Bill? So I'm looking at the paperwork. I don't see anything on the paperwork that needs to be notarized. I, as far as I know, we've nev we never have. Okay. If, it, if there isn't a notarial certificate on the paperwork, then it doesn't need to be notarized. Mm. There is not. You will have to sign licenses or a license form that I will complete at the office. All right. So now we're moving on to jumping over to the grant award from DEP. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Okay, so um, this is again um, a, a, a gift from Gary Bernhardt, he has been monitoring, he has been maintaining this grant and submittals and submitting the receipts um, regularly for the last, I think, 13 years. Uh, this is a Mass VP Shootsbury Recycling Dividends Program uh, that we received this year, another $1,960. Um, DP is looking for signatures from the chair of the select board. So we, um, Rita and Melissa can decide who signs. Um, but here's the document. It's a review of. Uh, I'm borrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Um, all right. So we've had this before as well. Yes. Does, um, do I hear a motion to sign? and accept the $1,960 from the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program. <laughs> so moved. Second. <laughs> All right. um, any, any further questions or such? No. Um, all those in favor? Carol, aye. Dr. Aye. Thank you, so Neil, aye. I guess I'll sign half of this right here. All right. So the next thing is to review the highway superintendent and assistant library assistant library job description. Melissa, I'm not sure if I saw them coming from you. Um, I haven't had a computer until today. That's right. Oh, so that's uh, this again. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they yeah. Melissa had them on that computer. That was yeah. yeah. So she did yeah. the final version. I did the final version, and oh, my okay. image was broken. In fact, I can't yeah. use it until. So um, that being the case, I know the select board would like to review them okay. ahead. Oh, so yeah. I apologize. We were hopeful that technology would be on our side, but yeah, well, and then I don't know if I could find them. So, um, G 
do you want to, I know we have something already on the 26th, do we want to add this to the 26th or go into the next one? I think January 2nd. Okay. Uh, I, I, it's up to you guys. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. January let's just keep it the... When I go home with this one, I will email them. That would be lovely, but if it's tomorrow, it's too. Well, no, I, I'll do it when I get home. Um, uh, review the flagpole policy. So was this a policy that's been adopted in other communities and or did we? Okay, so Donna just wrote the policy. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I haven't talked to Libert or the other towns. I imagine they're posting it. And as uh, the, the, the impetus for the policy was um, one of the public records requests that went to every town in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And it just pointed out that people should, you know, that if the select board is, is not, uh, oh, you know, if the select board would be like to be somewhat selective and what is posted by the town, then they need to have a policy in place. Otherwise, any request that comes forward from the community would need to be accommodated. I mean, it seems reasonable to me. So it's town yeah. sponsored. It's both like state and federal yeah. flags and then, and then town sponsored events. Yes. That those are the only things. And it's both flagpole and any banners. Any too, banners right? or okay. inside or banners outside the building or um, pieces of art <clears throat> inside the building or posters or okay or signage all right i mean that's it seemed reasonable to me we just had to fill in the blanks yeah i thought it was reasonable and fair and stuff to as i always say it's like we're not being each political or, you know. yeah <laughs> yeah i think it's good no it is it's sort of consistent with what you've been saying um okay so uh does anybody want to see it? Oh, I can share. It. I'll put it on the thing. Um, share screen. Remember. So this could be something you voted tonight. Could be right. signed. Hold on a second. I want to make sure I put it on the right screen. Now I'll share it. Share screen. Remember. we can see it and they can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, for those in that are um, attending, this is the flag policy, town policy we were just discussing um, that would apply to flagpoles, town buildings, and town property. And it would limit flags to those that are mentioned here, which Rita had just said are federal, state, town, and flags related to town events banners as such. Um, if you scroll through, I can't quite see everybody on the screen. I think some people are trying to read from what I can okay. tell. I think scrolling is helpful. Right, I'm mm -hmm. going to scroll. They can see themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. All right, I will scroll this down. I'm going too fast. Just someone say, slow down. Is there a lawsuit there. too? I thought there was some litigation with the city of Boston. Is mm. Mike mixing it up? I don't know. Okay. There may have been, but I'm not sure if it was Massachusetts. I've read several oh, across the okay. country. It's okay. going across the country. Okay. Uh, Grace, go ahead. Do you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say, yes, there was. There was a recent uh, Supreme Court case involving the city of Boston about flag use policy. Um, and that is a big part of this. But yeah, yeah, you're completely right. Your memory is right, Rita. Okay. Um, everybody had a Very chance sweet. to read through. Good. Good. Do we feel comfortable?
motion. Yeah. You can make a motion, sure. Yeah, so I make a motion that we approve the flagpole policy, flagpole slash banner policy mm -hmm. as um, presented this evening. Second. Okay. All right, any further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Carol, aye. Scott, aye. Thank you, so Neil, aye. Here. Okay. All right. Becky, so you'll print it and put the seal yeah. of Shrewsbury on there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Shrewsbury. And Shrewsbury. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, policy, town administrator update. Is that possible? Town administrator mm -hmm. update. Yeah. Uh -huh. if we're Hey, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't say that. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to start with something positive and exciting. Um, I had a conversation with a company called Livingston Energy Group yesterday. They had called, um, maybe just, uh, oh, they called last week and I made an appointment with them. Um, and what he what they are representing is they are a vendor for National Grid and National Grid has a new program where they will um, do 100%, they will pay the 100% cost of installation and um, electrical uh, setup service pro providing and installation of a supercharger. Um, at a potential cost of three hundred thousand dollars to National Grid, and the cost of two sheets vary of zero. Um, so I'm I'm getting all it. I met I met with him online. Um, he's putting a proposal together that I'll have for the next meeting. Um, looking into them briefly, they seem to be a legitimate company. Um, they are a National Grid vendor, and. Um, Hopefully this isn't just uh, smoke and mirrors. Um, potentially, if we were designated as um, a community with high needs or disadvantage, we would qualify for two such units. Um, so I, I talked to Marianne about the library. I know they've been planning on at some point in the future um, going after um, and electric charging stations. This, if this is really zero cost, um, it would be very positive for the town. The issues we ran into in the past with the electrical chargers were that um, the system that we would have, the monitoring system and credit card unit was gonna cost the town quite a bit of money and the maintenance of it would be ongoing charges. On this proposal, they are saying the first five years of um, using the, the system will be free for the town. And after five years, we would be free to look for at another vendor or we could uh, continue on with them for $300 a year, which is, um, which is not um, a, a cost that would prevent potentially us doing that. Also, they, we would have control of the rate. The town could decide on what rate to keep it so that we could just have it so that the town, you could have it so the town doesn't charge anything, or you could have it set at whatever amount covers all the town's costs or you could even set it at an amount that made a profit for the town that could go against, you know, paying that $300. So these are all interesting um, pieces that I hope to have more, a solid proposal to bring to you soon. So presumably the town pays the electricity. They, yes, the town the will pay for electricity. the electricity. But there'll be a unit with a credit card that yeah, yeah. that they can charge have the whoever uses this station pay for sure. their electricity. It would charge um, a vehicle in under an hour. Well, like they should if they're using it's like going up to a gas pump, they should take the electricity before I know their car gets really quick. 
And this is, that piece was problematic in the early proposals we had that we didn't end up following through on. So I think this monitoring system gives us a number of choices and make, we can make sure that the town is not paying for individuals electri um, sure. electricity and still make sure that it's a, you know, that we're not gouging. We can have the, the town would have the control on that. So overall, I, I tried hard to find faults in its program. And at this point, I haven't found them. So I'm sure. Um, yeah, I was just going to say Michael DiCare is here from the Energy and Climate yeah, Action. I'm committee. sure the Energy Committee will yeah. be reviewing this. And yeah. as soon as we get the proposal, I will send it to you, Michael, OK? Sounds good. Yeah, seems a little too good to believe. Yeah, yeah. What's in the Is it? Is it? He's a lot of electricity for you. They can take that back. Yeah. And he had, and he said that because I was, I was kind of flabbergasted because each issue that had been problematic, I brought up, and he was like, and his reason, he said the reason that I was finding it so streamlined is they worked hard. At making it streamlined, they've worked with a lot of municipalities, and they really have a lot of experience that they use to try to eliminate the problems. Like typically, they require a fifty thousand dollar deposit. They knew the towns weren't going to do that. So, um, if it was, well, National Grid says they're going to pay for it. Oh, National well, Grid is paying. National I, I Grid believe is one paying. of those things like. Inflation Reduction Act, or one of those things. Yeah. I believe there's something like uh, seven billion dollars the federal correct. government that released for that's probably for uh, charging yeah. cars. Yeah. If nothing. In I just read yesterday some yeah. article about well, that's nothing's happening. Why happen. isn't it happening? Right. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not but, quite sure what the deal was, but I think there's some federal money in here. I can smell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other issue <laughs> that has nothing to do with federal money, but is just timing. If, if National Grid hadn't decided to run three-phase power through the town of Shutesbury this summer, we would not be eligible and would not have gotten a phone call. Wow. The fact that three-phase wow. power oh, is right at my here. top of my yeah. driveway yeah. is is the reason we got the call. And why did they do that? What, why did National Grid do that? I think there's Wendell there's is one working. One I, 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 there's a whole bunch they of went to Wendell. There. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, well, we'll stay well, tuned. We'll stay okay. tuned. So that's the first item. The that's rest goodness. should be um, for you. Are the, yeah, it's like three days old. Um, <laughs> we have a, this. Yesterday was not a good Monday. Um, I was a bit late after a dental appointment. Came in to find Lenny here. Um, and uh, the town hall was, has a new leak. Um, Lenny was assisting everyone because we have water, water was pouring down the walls in the hallway upstairs and at the um, collectors, across from the collectors, yes. And um, it's coming from the cupola. Uh, Dale Hool um, came in and helped Lenny put up a bunch of buckets up in the attic. And um, had the building committee looked at that before? Yes. Um, Stephen had been up in the attic um, about the uh, he he was here for about four or five different days, going through the whole building. Where we they see it coming in, it's up higher in the cupola, and it would have been very difficult. I, they will be coming back, Stephen. Dalmas and we'll be coming back. He has a device that can tell how much moisture is on the wood and they'll be able to go through the attic and figure out more what's happening. We had driving rains oh, yeah. of about yes, 60 rain. miles oh, yeah. per hour oh, yeah. yesterday yeah. and that's and it stopped um, as soon as the, the, the leaking stopped when the yeah. rain stopped. So it's um, an issue for concern, but the building committee is on it. And we got assistance from outside. The other one, I think you're all aware that the DER Division of Ecological Restoration grant for Lois Brown to begin uh, this engineering work to remove the dam on Dudleyville Pond 
was approved and has um, it's now been, I think the press release has been made. So we are free to talk about it. Um, that issue is that we have a culvert right um, in the mouth of the dam. So there's a culvert going under Montague Road at that site. Um, because of that, as we've discussed before, there's concerns about getting engineering and, re and um, reconfiguration potentially of that culvert done. Um, and I will touch upon that in the next item. But right now, so this project is beginning right away at this point. Um, DER's engineers are going to come out to do a walkthrough. I've been invited, um, I think someone from Leverett will go. Uh, with Lois and we'll do a walk through around the area which will help us get insight um, on how to approach um, the culvert. And the final uh, thing I wanted to bring up was the MVP grant application. I got uh, two submittals in on Friday. One is requesting solar uh, for the library. The library has um, already done the design work for the solar that they want. As far as the panels go, um, there is not a design yet for the batteries, but I am putting in the application for MVP, I'm including batteries this year because it was given as a reason we didn't get it last year. But if you guys wanna look through the solar packet, um, I got through the library of what they're trying to do. Um, in the end, they are only looking for about 47 kilowatt hour system um, and at a cost of about $160,000. And I um, put in another $50,000 for battery backup. And the second item that I applied for was for um, infra an infrastructure grant um, to do the culvert repair at the Dudleyville um, Pond um, Montague Road site. Um, I've been speaking with Steve Sullivan. Um, we're going to um, look for an engineer to give us initial um, estimates and do initial work through Chapter 70 money using potentially some of the extra money that we, the highway department just received $87,000 of extra funding for this year. Um, so that gives us a little bit of leeway to use the, um, the chapter 90 for engineering. So it's using chapter 90 for the engineering and then that frees up. That frees up the, uh, the then chapter that, 70 money. Oh, not chapter 70, 70. The, the, addition, the auxiliary money um, okay. can supplement the chapter okay. 90 money. Okay. I thought you said chapter seven. I was getting confused between yes. chapter 70 and chapter 90. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was in school. <clears throat> right. Okay. And um, how much extra did we get? I believe it was 87,000. Okay. That was a lot. It was more than last year. I think last year was <clears throat> 72 or 68. Mm -hmm. So it's, well, they're not committing to, I mean, the, the analysis was done that. Like our our community should be receiving three hundred thousand per year to to keep up with our our maintenance load, and we're getting one hundred and fifty plus the auxiliary, so they're getting closer. Yeah. Of course, those costs are two thousand ten costs, so that that the three hundred thousand is based on. One quick question about that solar. Is that going to, in theory, provide all the solar? It is for the library, right? Okay. All, all the energy? In theory, they're saying it's, it's net zero. Net zero and yeah. I called, because I was kind of flat, you know, been flabbergasted a lot lately, but um, that amount seemed very, because originally they were talking about 50, 100, 100, yeah, 100, 100 kilowatt hours. hours but, and they were also talking about a system, but it's smaller, so the, the yeah. square footage is smaller. And I, the price of panels has come down some. So oh. that, that, that could be interesting yeah. as well. And those are my, oh, Michael has a question. Go ahead, Michael. 
You're muted. Oh, here I can. I had to do this with uh, yeah. there. So let me try it with you, Michael. How's that? Oh, you got it. Yay. I sounded in the story all day. I apologize. Um, I just wanted to go back to what Becky was talking about the three phase. So it's part of a whole federal upgrade. So it's federal money that we're getting electrified and upgraded the whole town. But I'm just curious, have you guys gotten the, the update as a, because of that for um, the broadband committee and MLP folks? Um, they, I know that they have to do all the work um, to move their wire, our wires to this. And they've been working on it. I've seen their Yeah, so it's, Gail told me it's $20,000 for the first phase and it'll be about 100,000 for the whole town. So it's great they were getting upgraded, but right now there's no compensation for us to have to move everything. So that's problematic. Um, so I just wanted to update that. And I have a favor because you guys were so speedy um, would you be willing just to say what you did with the bylaw wording, with the warrant wording, since you just, we I missed it? Is that acceptable to ask for? I have sure. it here. Yeah, so. Okay, so. No, he just wants to know what we're, we're, we're meeting again next week. Oh. Yeah. So you didn't decide? Here, the wording. That Donna oh. and, Donna and Miriam work together. Okay. On today, which so to and, read the whole bylaw. <laughs> well, I uh, it's it's three sentences yeah. here. So Article Three to see if the town will vote to repeal the old 1987 Town of Shrewsbury Wetlands Protection Bylaw and adopt the new 2024 Town of Shrewsbury Wetlands Protection Bylaw as detailed below, or take any action relative thereto. Cool. Thank you. And, the detail of the new bylaw will be listed in full below. Great. And it's already in the warrant, but it's not the final. Well, thank you for backtracking. I truly appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Becky, if you need help on that, I'm pushing it into the. Well, I guess she's objecting to this. Was it? I. I no, no, I was, I had offered to help get it into as less pages as possible. Oh, I think for this, we, I don't know if we want to mess with the format. Well, it's just taking some of the very, yeah, just space, so there's not much use, so never mind. Well, you know. Well, luckily, it. it's not 25 pages, now it's only 14. That's better. Are there any updates on PFAS? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, so Sam Evans from our tie and bond technician mm -hmm. um, continued work uh, last week. Um, and at this point, about half the, the PFAS tests have been done. Uh, he's got more testing lined up for tomorrow and Thursday. So that's going well. Um, and yeah, he's People in the community have been great. They, you know, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I don't need to be here. You can just go in my house. And so he it's all coming together. So it's getting done much quicker now that we're in the, you know, fifth round or so. So that's um going smoothly. And um and what's he testing for? More potential he's testing or, or is it retesting stuff we at this point we're only retesting okay, so, okay. so we have like 68 different households that we have to monitor at different um time intervals okay cool. the, the ones with the higher readings are more frequent at this point but that should it should all uh, over time get to one time a year as far as testing any other questions? Do you have gasoline cleanup? Is there anything with the gasoline? Um, I'm going to be out there again on Wednesday with um, with Sam Evans. Um, we just need to find the well, and but we have much better. Uh, 
the owner of the property has identified where she last saw it, which we didn't have that information before. So, so there's the one well that wasn't tested. As far as the gasoline, yes. Yes, yes yeah. there's still one well on the gasoline that's outstanding that we're trying to locate. Um, if we can't find it, we're gonna have to install a new well. Um, so isn't there tomorrow- well that, Isn't there like an arcade and it on the wall? No, they're flat. Okay. And they, they there's different ways of installing them. That's typical for in blacktop. It's not typical for in the middle of a, right. of a woody area. Yeah. So yeah, there's been a lot of comments made about how that was done. And I don't think Ty and Bond would do it that way if they had had the option. Because it's damn tight, we wouldn't have spent five minutes before we found it. So yeah, okay. that's unfortunate. And use a metal detector. The metal top. We have two going. Yeah. Okay. And I think Miriam now has her hand. Oh, Miriam, did we have before I call Miriam? Did we have anything else related to those things before? No. Do you mm -hmm. mind if we yeah. take yeah. a moment? Oh, Miriam. Yeah. Hi. Um. I was wondering, you're talking about possibly needing to dig a new well. That's at the fire station. Um, if we were to, it would be um, at the uh, uh, Butters property. And yes, if, if we can't find it, I will be working on um, permitting tomorrow afternoon because we need to find it. And if we can't, we need to come to you to, to try to work through um, getting a new well put in. Right. And I don't know if there is a wetland delineation around the fire stations. Do we know where the wetland boundaries are, Becky? Has there been any kind of professional delineation? Yes, there has been. I can't tell you what year, but they have not been within the last five years. Okay, thanks. And it would be in, it would be within probably 30 feet of a wetland if it's not in the wetland. So it's, it's a definite case we would be coming to you for that well if we don't find it with the metal detectors. All right. We meet again January 7th. We're not going to, we, so Monday is the holiday, right? Monday. Monday. Yeah. So we meet again on the 26th. We meet again on the 26th. Right. At 6 o'clock. And I'll post that okay. meeting tonight. Okay. And right. I have it in my calendar. Thank you. And if uh, Miriam will let us know, she gets it for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, make a motion make that adjourn. we adjourn. We can do that. Second. Okay, all in favor? Carol, aye. Dr. Aye. Nikki, so you aye. Okay.